more food readily available to all of them. Now, where did I put this book? Maybe I have lost it already. Here, did I give you my book? No, here we go. Seems like Taylor has managed to find a side stride jackal, so let's go over to her and see this beautiful little creature. We do have a side striped jackal, but unfortunately it's not the happy sighting that I really wanted. This, you can see this, this poor fella does not look in the greatest condition. It's very mangy and itchy. It keeps shaking, it keeps rolling around in the grass, and it keeps scratching itself. It's not in the greatest condition. It actually looks quite thin, too, which is a bit of a shame. Unfortunately, mange is a terrible killer. We've seen it quite a bit when it turns into psychoptic mange, like it did with the Styx cubs. There's very, very little chance that you're going to come back from something like that. Now, this jackal shouldn't have mange at this time of the year. So to me, that says that there must be another underlying problem. It must be sick. I'm not sure what type of illness it might have, um, but mange is typically related to um, sort of um, when the immune system of an animal um, weakens, it'll, it'll come in and start to take over. So there's something else that's wrong with it too, but I'm not sure. There's also a lot of birds alarming. They've just started alarming now for the jackal, but I've been listening to them alarm right in front of the lodge so we will go down there and have a check too but you can see look at it it's lost quite a bit of hair on its tail it is very very itchy now i know it's so terrible and of course i'd want to go out there and bathe it in f10 um, but unfortunately i'm not going to be able to do that we do let nature take its course out here and not everything is meant to survive only the strongest and the fittest genes will make it through and unfortunately the rest will succumb to being eaten or to diseases and things like that, which is a tough life. It's like I always say, nature is not kind. It is quite cruel. Now, Stevie, you're wondering if this will spread to other jackals. It might, if it does have any other social interactions. It can indeed. So what mange actually is, is it's a mite that gets into the hair follicles and feeds on the hair follicles. That's why you start to see the hair disappearing and then you see the scabby skin that comes after that. So they will scratch and itch, roll around in the grass and do all those things. Um, so yes, it can, be, it can be contagious, but hopefully it doesn't, you know, sort of have too much other interactions with any other jackals because you'd hate for them to pass it on. But mange is also a really easy thing to beat. Um, if you are fit and strong, you know you might get played by it slightly, um, but, but you ca can get rid of it naturally all on its own. We saw that with the Nguhuma cubs. They're a perfect example. They had it in conjunction with a white muscle disease, uh, which is a lack of selenium and uh, a couple of other uh, minerals and vitamins too. And then the mange normally comes in after something like that too. But very, very sad though. It's just sitting off, very itchy, very scratchy. P heart, you're wondering if, I, if I'm if i sure that I don't think that it's very old. It could be a combination, so maybe it's an old jackal, but it doesn't look healthy. The fact that it's lost the hair on its tail, uh, that says to me that there's definitely a skin condition. Uh, and, and if you saw it when it was standing up, it, look, it looked a little bit wobbly as well. And its legs are starting to get quite patchy and quite scabby. So maybe it is just an old jackal and mange is going to be the thing that takes it down if it's not going to be malnourishment because like I said it does look quite underweight as well so yeah so it could quite be but I, it's so difficult to tell uh, the side strike jackals are quite sort of grey in colour so they almost look like they're old even when they're quite young they do, they're, old, they're like the old man jackal, they're the black back jackals um, with their coloration don't seem to have that look upon them but very sad though but Jackal, I'm sure you're making the best of what you have, but let's not dwell on the sad situation for too much longer. Let's let this poor fella scratch in peace. Let's go see what else we can find. Well, I'm sorry that it wasn't a healthy Jackal that I got to show you. The birds are going crazy down at the dam. I think we need to head that way and go and have a look. But we've got to go the scenic way around. Still no more developments on the, 
found that leopard and obviously as you can see I didn't get lost because we're on the Chitra Chitra A strip now. I thought I'd gone a little bit too far south but I hadn't. I actually had probably about another kilometer of road to go. Um, but just to play it safe I did turn around or take the next road. Okay, so we'll just... Can we see how fast the car can go? No. <laughs> We'll take off, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. This is your captain speaking, Taylor McCurdy. We'll be going on a flight this afternoon. It's a pretty fair day. The wind is starting to uh, pick up, uh, so please remember to keep your seat belts buckled. So, yeah, should be a pilot. What am I doing in this career? I've picked the wrong thing. <laughs> right, me just being silly, of course. Uh, we're not going to be taking off. This is not a type of transformer aeroplane. Oh, look, Inyala. That's going to be nice. This looks like there's some big Inyala rams. Enjoy. Oh, we're flying. Nice, Sebastian. Look how creative you are. Shadows are taking off. Wee. <laughs> See, this is the type of thing we have to do to keep ourselves entertained when there's not too many animals around. <laughs> it's nice. We can have fun wherever we go. We don't need much to keep ourselves entertained. And crowned lapwings. I'm going to show you these Inyala because they're beautiful. I'm just crossing the road up ahead. I'm going to try and go stealth mode once I get over this bump. Switch off. Hello guys. Where are you going to go? I'm going to come through this gap. I'm just going to see. I think they might come right here. Just to the base of this Balanites tree. Isn't that lovely golden light that's starting to come through now too? And I'm also just going to have a little look around. Oh, this is a young Inyala that's coming closer to the car. You can see the bigger boys just at the back in the lovely golden light. And there are three of them. In wonderful condition. Now, they don't look like they've got mange at all. They're in much better nick than that jackal was. Head down on the ground. I think it might be actually looking for some Balanites fruit. It ha uh, they've unfortunately dropped most of them. Because I was checking a whole lot of Balanites the other day. And you could see where the grass was all flattened quite a bit. But you see that, how they've all got their heads down. And that's this big tree. And we've been seeing the elephants eating. Well, in my last cycle, we were seeing the elephants feeding on the fruit of this tree quite often. Hippos will eat it. And as you can see, antelope will make a, a use of it too. It's obviously eating fruit is high in sugar. So it's a, it's a good energy source to give yourself a little boost. And they're actually quite determined. They keep coming round and round. But I think in Yala, I think that the elephants have probably got to this fruit before you. And their little trunks are able to reach underneath all the tall bits of grass. And of course they've got a super sense of smell that they would sniff those fruits out from anywhere. So sorry for you in Yala. Well, unless you're just looking for perhaps some nice green leaves, maybe even some green shoots of grass. Occasionally they'll also take grass. But they're predominantly browsers. And it's just stepping over there. Lots of thorns around there too. Yes, be careful you don't get prickled. Isn't that nice? Well, those birds seem to have stopped alarming as well. But we will go down and around to the dam and have a look if anything is that side. You fellas haven't seen anything this afternoon? Looks like it's staring at something off into the distance. Smelling, listening. And now you're looking at us. Don't worry, we don't want to eat you beautiful striking markings though that the Inyala have though the kudu and the bushbuck are just as pretty too it's almost quite difficult to try and choose between the three who's got the better looks I mean, in terms of striking coloration Inyala take the cake they win first prize and then I don't know who do you think after that kudu or bushbuck Seb? Bushbuck. Bushbuck and then kudu. Wow. Oh look at that all three of them standing in a row. You've got youngest, to, or closest to us. You've got a middle-aged one in the middle, and then the big one right at the back. That was quite cool. All of different heights. Something, something. They're not too keen on something in the distance. They're staring off to the left. Oh, it's <laughs> it's uh, people. Yeah. <laughs> so they must be setting up. They've got a bush bushbriar site not too far from here. So perhaps some of the guests are going to have dinner underneath the stars this evening, and that's what those Inyala are looking at not alarming not making a, a barking sound but just watching and they don't normally alarm at humans I've, I've noticed even when you're going on bushwalks and things like that 
I've never had uh, an Inyala or a Kudu or a Bushbuck bark at me, but they will most certainly bark at leopards, at lions, and they'll even bark at hyena and cheetah too. And off they go. You know, walk past us. Come on, I, come and get illuminated by that lovely golden light. It's so pretty. This is my favorite spot out here. This is where I keep telling you all about uh, my, one of my favorite elephant sightings we had. Same, about the same time of the day, golden light. And a, quite a big herd of them moving through um, and amongst these are marulas. And there's nothing quite as pretty. And off they go. So quiet. A couple of also Birchall starlings just down on the ground. And they'll be quite happy that the Inyala are walking straight in their pathway. As they'll try and collect any of the insects that do jump up from the last grass. Off they go. Look at those dainty legs. These boots were made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. Because one of these days these boots are going to walk all over you. Doom, 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 doom. I don't even know if those are the words of the song, but I tried my best there. <laughs> right. Enough of the singing and our silly antics from Sebastian and I. I don't know why I'm in such a, a silly mood. We're going to head down towards the dam and see what's lurking below the water. I'm going to send you back across to Ali, who has moved away from her wildebeest friend. And I don't know what animal, what bird she's going to see next. Well, first of all, I need to try and get myself out of this road. <laughs> I would have paid some good money to see Taylor on the airstream pretending to be an airplane or a pilot or whatever it is that it was. I'm sure that was quite hilarious. Now, oh, let me carry on. And then I think maybe we'll go check around Tamboti Dam in that area. Because I know that Mbula was seen somewhere around there. It has become slightly colder. So it's a good chance for him to start moving around. And then we'll double check around there. And if not, perhaps we'll just carry on around. See what else there is around here. It's been a bit of a quiet afternoon. Other than that great wildebeest migration. I don't think there's too much happening at Juma. So luckily Taylor is on the way at Chitwa. And I wonder if she's going to go down to the dam and what she's going to be able to see over there because lots of little things lurking around and of course it would be quite nice to see now that we've had the great Juma migration to see the great Chitwa crocodile because <laughs> he is a bit of a scary crocodile I think Nile crocodiles are very feisty creatures all right now there were some birds fly that flow flew <laughs> if I can remember how to talk into ah yes do you see that on top of the tree there. I think they're all pretty much the same. It's probably the flock of the white crested helmet shrikes. Now I can only see that one on top there so I wonder where the rest of its flock is but I think it's the ones that I saw fluttering about. There we go. Oh I thought you were all gonna come into the same tree. All right this doesn't seem to be a group of seven. <laughs> <laughs> just three of them flying all around the trees but I think they've gone into a bit of a tricky spot all right but I definitely only saw three so we do know now that they don't only occur in groups of seven <laughs> let's find out if maybe we can find a bird party somewhere around here hmm Some red's helmet shrike would also be very nice. I am hoping that we're going to be able to see a flock of them, which is pretty much a dark version of the white crested helmet shrikes. They're very similar. They even make a similar noise. But the red's helmet shrikes, they are entirely black and have a red eye. So similar shape to the ones that we were looking at, but not quite. Now I'm hoping for any other little creatures. Do you want to see a fire finch or you're wondering if it's possible to see a fire finch? It is possible, however it's tricky. So they're very small little birds and they are often in the bushes. So I was hoping we were going to get some earlier because they're the same, roughly the size of a wax bill. But uh, we will be on the lookout for them. 
hopefully we'll see them because they are pretty tiny little creatures and beautiful colors so I'll keep my eyes open for some of the smaller ones as well I want to find out where all of the birds are hiding because we only found one spot and we could hear them all around us there was a nice big bird party around there but they were all quite quiet uh, sorry quite elusive in the sense that they were all going into the thickets Now let's. Hmm, I think maybe we should go into the western side. Drive into the sunshine, see if perhaps anything is being attracted to the big flame that is the sun. Maybe we'll see anything else there. Unless you're wondering if we see glossy ibis in the savvy sand. Uh, we don't see them here. I think they occur further north towards Botswana and that general area, but let's have quickly a look around in the book and then we'll be able to find out. I think Botswana is the area where they start occurring and we don't see them around here, but I have the feeling that maybe somewhere around um, Johannesburg and that sort of general area. So let's double check. All right, so the glossy ibis, the bottom one here. Now, it could occur here. It is, according to my trusty bird guide, a common resident around lakes, dams, and pans. However, I haven't seen a glossy ibis over here, and I've actually marked it in my book that the only place where I have seen a glossy ibis was in northern Botswana. So if you see the distribution here, this is roughly where it tells you where there's been areas where they are a bit more common are marked in dark green, and then areas where they are not so easy to spot are in light green. Now, we are roughly in this little section over here. I know it's a bit hard to get an idea with my fat fingers in there but you get the spot so the lighter the clearer uh, green area and then obviously my beautiful writing that is not that pretty you should see Tristan's that says that the first one that I ever saw was in Chobi in 2013 and I think that was actually the first time that I ever went to Chobi which is a few years ago now definitely need to head back up there soon it is one of the most spectacular national parks that I've seen and just seeing all of this quantity of elephants. So if you're an elephant lover, Chobi is probably the place to go. And especially when the water level is low because you'll see thousands of elephants. Well, maybe not thousands, but definitely hundreds of them just coming down the water to drink. And then they feed on the reeds and you'll see the little ones playing and lots of hippos. And of course, the bird life is incredible over there. So I think it's one of my favorite places on earth, Chobe National Park. And then of course you can do self-drive, but it's very rustic there. It's not like the accommodations that you would get if you come into the Kruger National Park where it's a lot more civilized. Chobe still has that very much wild feeling to it. It isn't like, well, if you come across a camping site, there might or might not be someone looking after it and do not get out of your tent because you will get eaten type of thing. So. <laughs> But it is a wonderful national park. Now, I'm going to go check around Tamboti Dam, see if perhaps there were any signs of Mbola coming down. I do know that there were some people that went and looked for him earlier on, but with no luck. So I'm hoping that maybe we will see some signs of him. If not, then I think we're going to drive onto the west, onto the setting sun, see if perhaps we can catch another beautiful sunset this afternoon. I'm still surprised when we timed it yesterday that it was just 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I like I would have given it at least 5. Not so little. That was <laughs> an eye opener. I think it's, you know, very certified scientific trustworthy proof that when the sun goes down, it doesn't just go down, it sinks completely in one go. Now, Tamboti Dam is still a bit further along the road. Come and Bulla. We want to see how you're doing. Misha, you're wondering how big the property that I'm allowed to drive on is. Well, Juma is 
around 880 hectares and then we can also drive on Chitwa that's about 400 so we have an area of about 1200 they are on about their hectares that we can drive upon which is in the bigger scheme of things not the biggest area around but I think we have some amazing animal density I mean just look at the last few days all of the cats that we've been able to see it's been wonderful ah some kudu down the road hello girls are you heading towards Tamboti Dam as well I think maybe Tamboti Dam is the place to check Kudus are going there, apparently there was a leopard there. Hmm. Oh, a nice big bull over here. Good, we haven't seen a bull in a while. Hello. Oh, look at that beautiful setting, isn't it stunning? It almost seems like something from a book cover. That beautiful blue sky that there was earlier on. I think there might be another bull coming behind this one and it's a bit of a tense time for male kudu this time of the year because it's the time where they start competing for the mating rights and as well fighting each other for those mating rights. Funny enough I saw I've only seen kudus fight twice and the second time that I saw them was not too long ago and was here on Juma and they were properly going at each other and I was secretly hoping that they would get their hordes tangled up just to see how it happens and how they untangle themselves but um, they were being very careful about the way that they were doing things now there's a beautiful girl in half the golden light those beautiful markings on the side hmm. it was just giving me a bit of an attitude turn around typical model face like oh, I'm too pretty for you <laughs> bye bye kudu girl seems like the boy over here is being a bit too shy so I'm gonna leave him and carry on towards Tamboti Dam seems like Taylor though has managed to find some of my favorite tiny little creatures so let's go over to her <laughs> We have Annie, we have found one of your favourite little creatures. It is, of course. Oh, I just heard something. It's birds also in the grass. We are looking at dwarf mongoose, a whole family of them. Aren't they so precious? They are just getting ready to go to sleep now, though. Look at those little ones. There's two of them. They are so small. The one at the top left is quite funny, too. It was biting its feet just a moment ago. Perhaps it was a little grassy something stuck in between the pads of its feet because that sometimes happens but the Sun is slowly starting to disappear you can starting to disappear you can see the last bit of golden light is just there where they have a little midden that's where they use the luxury facilities oh we have a demonstration this afternoon too how fantastic you are well trained you get 10 out of 10 for that very well done <laughs> not a little mongoose that's an adult mongoose that's, um, I'm just going to turn my radio down, sorry. Just having a quick groom, enjoying the golden light. One last bit of interactivity between one another before they actually decide to go back to bed. And there's a few more little ones down on the ground, right at the base of the mound. You might see just to the little bit to the right. There they are. There's another little one following an adult around. Wee! Very quick, zipping up that mound. Are you going to go into that little burrow? Maybe. They are so precious. Now I love little mongoose and we actually haven't had any spectacular sightings over the last uh, couple of weeks. It's been quite quiet with the mongoose, but I'm glad that they're back. Oh, you see them cower a little bit there, just because if you have a look just above them, look at the magpie shrike, just up and to the left from where they are. Look at that. So how amazing is this little relationship that they have? Now machine gun nest, you say they're just going about their business. They are indeed. And they're going about their business now with a magpie shrike and it's not actually uncommon to see uh, relationships between birds and mammals we see it with a number of different ones for example the most iconic in a sort of symbiotic relationship has to be with the ox peckers with the various mammal species acting as their personal grooming service now the magpie shrike is not doing that it's just hoping that as the mongoose move around in the grass like what we saw with the Inyala and the virtual starlings they'll also kick up insects and they'll hope that 
the, or the magpie shrikes will hope that they get the insect before the mongoose does because that's what they're feeding on they feed on little invertebrates but look at that they have very little light on their mound now so they won't be getting warmth they might be absorbing some of the the warmth from the mound itself but it will be nice and toasty inside there look at them all, all grooming each other and because they're so social it is very important that they're constantly reassuring the bonds between one another so grooming is the perfect is the perfect way to do so ah oh, beard we haven't heard from you in a while it's great to hear uh well it's great to hear your name again you've said that uh, you love just watching these little guys they are it's it's great now there's a bird that's shouting about and you can see it's definitely got one of the adults attention as it keeps looking around the one on the left looking up it jumped up a little bit higher just making sure so that even though they are grooming each other and their day is about to come to an end when they'll go back inside they've got to be careful because it's still a perfect opportunity for a small raptor of some sort to come swooping down and snatch one of those bundles of joy up and that would be terrible for us to see because they are they are very cute animals these guys look at them they're so small and the smallest little carnivore that we have out here but they're very entertaining don't you think you can really just sit here and watch watch them and one of the most amazing things to do is to actually go and perch yourself right down below that mound I like to do it first thing in the morning and then they're often when they become relaxed they'll just come and walk around you they won't really touch you but they become quite curious well the magpie shrikes are loving the mongoose this afternoon there were a whole lot of them uh, laying around in this area and you can actually hear them I'm gonna sit quietly because you might be able to hear them sort of squeaking about or communicating with one another it's a very soft and subtle noise that they make it sounds like little birds that are chirping at each other constantly oh isn't that lovely Scratch, scratch, scratch. Let me get those fleas and also eat it as a snack. Everyone else has gone on one last adventure, it seems. Very itchy. Now, we were talking about the other day when we were watching Mvula um, as he was sitting very patiently at the edge of that warthog burrow. Well, we didn't know at the time that there was actually a warthog inside there and we're, we're talking about animals that use burrows to house themselves so you can imagine there will be quite a quite a bit of parasites also the same thing as a aardvark or a warthog burrow the same thing will be happening inside this termite mound with all these mongoose living here they're going to be quite a few parasites so they move quite often they don't necessarily stay in the same spot they might have a couple of termite mounds that they're utilizing within their territory so yes, mongoose are actually territorial. Well, in the case of the dwarf mongoose, they have little territory territories too, not particularly big. Um, I wouldn't imagine, I wouldn't actually imagine how big their territories are. Cat smuggle, you're wondering what happened to the termites? They'll probably still be in there. Uh, I don't think that this termite mound's necessarily inactive. They might just be living underground. Uh, they, they have a, an understanding. Uh, mongoose will eat termites though. So you might find that they're just living in other other little cavities of this mound but they do live with one another to an extent um, these mongoose though, would love to eat the alates as do the rest of the creatures out in the bush they're full of protein full of fat a very a very good treat to feed upon but there's no alates at the moment they are the princes and the princesses of the termites the flying ants as they're also known as we'll only start to see them again those beautiful booms um, of all those insects towards the end of this year once we get a, a decent amount of rain we actually only saw it quite late this year just because we did have late rains and it's lovely now we still haven't had much luck with our leopard search it seems as though everybody's getting ready to go back to bed now so I wanted while we've still got a bit of light there's just one more road I want to check for tracks and unfortunately it's quite difficult to check for tracks in the dark thank you mongoose good night be safe I'll go around here we actually saw mongoose the other day and we didn't stop for them because they were in the long grass and we were quite sad about it 
and I'm glad we didn't though because that was that's as good of a sighting as what you're going to get with mongoose out in the open lots and lots of little interactions it's difficult to try and spot them when they are running through this long grass so when when it is summer and you have had a bit of rain or you're coming into the dry season and the grass is still dropping you've got to time it perfectly so the best times to go to the mounds just to have a clear view of them is first thing in the morning because they'll do exactly what the birds do but they'll sit on top of their little termite mounds and huddle up and warm themselves up and then or at this time just before the sun sets and they all come back again there's a lilac breasted roller just up top here and now oh never mind it's just flown away if you're wondering I didn't stop at the dam. The dam is just down here. Unfortunately, there were guests having sundowners, and I didn't want to go and disturb their beautiful view. But you've got a view of the dam from the other side. Right now, Ellie's been on a mission all day long. She's been trying to find hyenas. She's going back to the den now, and hopefully, the adults will be back with the little ones and they'll show their faces. my goodness all right guys fingers crossed they will be here at least one of them and then we can sit here peacefully if there's one of the adults and then patiently wait to have a glimpse of the little one i think this has been my equivalent of taylor and mvula and this is ali and the hyenas patiently coming and checking and waiting and seeing them come along all right, so I spoke to one of the guys that was here earlier and he mentioned that one of the adults is here somewhere. <gasps> There's a little one! <laughs> so excited! <laughs> Hello! Oh, this is so nice! You are also very curious. Taylor was definitely right about you guys. No boundaries, hey? Oh, and you smell like a proper hyena too. Now, it's a very strong smell. Oh my god, this is like a tiny teddy bear. I am so excited. Hello, little one. Now, I believe, if I am not mistaken, that this cub was born roughly around December. I think that's what Taylor was saying to me earlier. But by all means, if you've got any more information about who this is and how old it is, please feel free to send it using the hashtag Safari Live, as I am very, very, very excited to be here with this little fluffy hyena who's just starting to turn whitish and it's losing all that baby colors, all that black that they're born with and it's spots starting to come through very beautifully hello you are very curious huh. and such beautifully round ears i think that's one of the things that always gets my attention in terms of hyena when they're youngsters, it's almost they look so silky and velvety. And all that hair, that crazy hair. You are very cute. Now when we were here earlier, there's another hole at the back of the of this termite mound, another hole that they seem to be using, which is pretty much just on the other side. So I just want to wait around for a little while, and if they don't come back around here, then I'm going to try and go around there, because I think the entrance that they're using is actually the other one, just judging by how much grass and leaves there, there are around here. And the other one's also a bit thicker, so it's a lot, it's a bit... Um, um, more covered for them to come in, in and just start looking for things. Linda, you're wondering where the other baby is. Um, I can't see it from here. Like I said, I think perhaps they are on the other side because there's another entrance that's covered by the bushes. So I think perhaps that's where all of them are. So I just want to wait for a little bit. Just give them a bit of a second to get used to our voice and everything that's happening around here like I said one of the other guides was here before us and he says that uh, he said that one of the adults was around here and was present 
So I'm just gonna wait for a little bit, just maybe get our eyes used to it. And if they're not here, then we might just try driving around the back, see if perhaps we can get a look from there. Because maybe that is the side that they're using the most. Chris Rogue, so you, thank you for confirming that that is Intima, so Ribbon's uh, female cub. Alright, so it's good to start placing all these things. I find it a lot easier to find out who's who and start learning their personalities and everything else once I manage to see them. So thank you very much for sending all that information. Um, would you mind just confirming how old this cub is? As I would say about five months old or so, just judging by the color of the spots, perhaps a bit younger than that because it's still looking quite dark. They normally start getting their, their spots or becoming a bit whitish once they're about, I would say, maybe three months old or so. And this one's got quite a bit of white already. Take care. Uh, you're wondering if that cub can eat meat yet. Well, definitely it can and often uh, the mothers, or ribbon in this case, because we know who it is, would bring food onto the den. So it's not that common for them to actually come and get the cubs and then take them somewhere else, but it's a bit more common sometimes for them to bring the food around here. And I've seen it often in the dens that I've been where the mothers will bring sometimes um, buffalo legs and things like that. And as they start getting older and they don't uh, survive on meat anymore, because obviously they won't do it like every single time that they go hunting, that they'll bring something here for them to eat. Um, the little ones will start going and moving around uh, with the parents just looking for food. Not with the parents, with an adult looking for food. I think that's a bit more correct to say if I'm not mistaken. Matt, you're 10 years old and you're wondering if hyenas eat meat or if they eat plants too. Well, they are carnivorous animals, so their diet consists mainly of meat, but sometimes, like the lions and the leopards, if they have a bit of an upset stomach or if they're lacking some sort of gut bacteria, then they instinctively know to eat some plants, but it's not something that they do for any other purpose. Definitely not for nutritional purposes. They won't eat salad and meat like what we do. Now I think it might be worth to try and go around, see if perhaps we can get a view of them on the other side. Because we went missioning around there this morning, because that's where the adult went. So I think maybe I'm gonna go around see if they are there and if they're if they're not there then we're gonna leave. But awesome to have seen that curious little cub coming to us. Now let's just see it is a bit thick around here and it gets a bit tricky. But we'll go around and see if we can perhaps see the other entrance. Wendy, you can do this. Sorry guys, I have to do the long turn around because I cannot go any closer because it's quite thick around here so I just want to make sure also that we keep a distance from them that will not bother them. Ah, there you are. You are using this entrance, aren't you? <laughs> you are a very friendly hyena. Hello, Intima. You're feeling quite brave. As long as you don't pick up any bad habits of coming and eating our stuff in camp, we can be friends. Oh, I think my heart is melting right now. They're always so curious about the car, so she... Ooh. I think just the moving of my hair spooked it a little bit. Stella, you're wondering if they can whoop at this age. Um, they can make all sorts of noises, but not the big whooping sounds that we hear the adults make. 
they do more a bit of a laugh. You see how it's picking up all the scents? That's so very grown up hyena of you. Now, like I was saying, they're very curious of the car tires, and I think maybe this one hasn't seen too many cars. And um, they often come and try and chew them, funny enough, which is not ideal because we don't want them to pick up any bad habits, especially not when they're older with stronger teeth. And uh, I think it's the smells that attract them so much because there's the engine and the brake fluids and pretty much everything else around. Hello. This is super sweet. I am slightly concerned though that I cannot see any of the adults and I know maybe the other guys saw them but I wonder if perhaps the adult haven't haven't gone out patrolling. So I'm gonna maybe try and move a little bit further, see if perhaps the adult is somewhere where the cub is, but if it's not then I'm gonna leave the sighting because obviously this is a very curious little thing and I don't want it to come out because it's curious and now there's any potential danger around here. One of the I'm dragging the whole tree with me. Alright, I've got to see this clearly what's happening. I think it's a bit high. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go a bit more towards this side. Ah, there's the adult. Okay, good. Then we can stay. Perfect. I just see the belly of the adult in between the bushes. So it's having a good nap and not too far from the youngsters. So they have definitely been around here, which is good to know. And now I feel a lot more comfortable because I know the little one is being looked after. Now I can't see who it is from here. I would imagine perhaps Ribbon if this youngster comes and starts wandering around here. <laughs> Very curious of everything that's around it while mom sleeps. Izzy, you're saying it's a very outgoing little one and that it's a personality for sure. I agree with you. Very curious and I think maybe it's going to start becoming one of my favorites soon. Oh, and I see another adult. Okay, so definitely two adults at the den. It's very hard to... I can just see a few spots not far from where we can see this one lying down. So it's good to know that two of them are here. And I do know that there's a tiny little cub somewhere around here as well, but it's not out. Seems like Justin Tima is the one that's missioning around. Perhaps because she's the oldest one, so <laughs> she's allowed some liberties. <laughs> Where are you going? That's not the best spot to go. can't see it anymore. I think perhaps it's gone around the mound again or close to, uh, no, close to one of the adults. Oh, you're coming back. Oh, you're so cute. Little Matilda, you're asking me to try and describe what hyenas smell like. Um, it's a very hard smell to try. It's very strong, but it's it's that kind of smell that I don't know. I don't. What? How would you explain what they smell like? It's um, they smell like honey badger, but then <laughs> I would have to explain what a honey badger smells like. 
Imagine a mix of like maybe some chemicals, strong chemicals and mud all mixed together and add some water into it. I think that's the best way that I can describe it. It's a very earthy smell, but it's not easy to, to pick up. And I think maybe the little one is calling from inside because I think I've heard a few calls every now and again. And so maybe she's just waiting for a new partner in crime to start maybe chewing on some of the logs around here. I can definitely hear a little one crying inside of the mound. But I don't think I don't think the females are quite ready. I mean, we saw them earlier today when they were just coming back to the den and even when we checked in the morning, they only arrived later on. So I think perhaps they're also a bit tired and that's why nobody's really paying attention to what the little one wants. Hello Antima. She's just behind us now, so I don't want to make any sudden movement so that it doesn't get spooked again. So I think earlier on perhaps my long hair gave it a bit of a fright. Where are you going? It's just, it's funny, it's being a little shocked now. It's going around the car, just smelling everything. As long as it doesn't start chewing any tracks, any tires, then we are fine. <laughs> Is it still back there? Yeah, it's just busy smelling the back of the car. I can't really see it anymore. But obviously I'm not going to move now because I don't want it to, <laughs> to get spooked or anything. And it's quite wonderful. I think they've... So there was another little one in the previous den, so I'm sure they've moved them all around here. And then as this one starts getting older, then they're going to start walking around with the parents. But I think we still have a few months ahead of us where we're going to be able to enjoy all these tiny little hyenas coming into this den. Which is going to be pretty awesome. Now, is it, is it still behind us? I think it's eyeing Gerd right now. Gert. Sorry, I'm always going to get your name wrong. I can't see it anymore. No, as long as it doesn't chew anything, we're fine. <laughs> James, you're wondering what they would use as a den site if they didn't have a turbine mound. Well, a lot of the times um, animals also go into drainage lines, so the big dips where it's, there's very thick vegetation where it's hard to get and they will leave their little ones hidden perhaps underneath a fallen log or a fallen tree that's very, very nicely covered. Um, leopards, for example, if they don't have termite mounds or anything else, they also like big fallen over trees that have cavities in them. Often they'll leave the little ones there and so will hyenas. There's something that keeps moving around here, and I don't know if it's a Franklin or if it's, or if it's another hyena. Because I hear the grass move every now and again. Hmm. Ewe, you're wondering if hyenas belong to any if they belong to the cat family or the dog family or if they're in their own species. Well, they are in their own species and they're only closely related to other hyenas around the world. Um, however, due to some genetic studies, it seems like they perhaps share more characteristics with cats rather than dogs, but they are a completely separate species with their own dynamics and completely gene uh, different genetic code. Now, it seems like Intima got tired of inspecting us and now she's gone back. Now, Intima means dark in Shangan, if you were wondering why we're calling her that. <laughs> I think this is a typical time of the day where <laughs> the little one is bored and it, was ju it just wants someone to play with it. And the little cub that's in there won't come out until pretty much mom gives the command, but and the two adults that are here are too busy sleeping to move around. <laughs> So it's out of p playing partners. A bit too active or anything, aren't you? I 
Um, but Mark, you're wondering if the little cubs aren't at risk with the cats. They definitely can be, especially lions and leopards. And but that's why the when the parents are around, that's why this little one is being so brave and wandering off because it also knows that the parents will look after it or the adults will look after it. However, if they weren't around, then it would probably wouldn't be as brave and it would be a lot more scared and stay inside of the den. Now they also choose dens like this one where there are chambers, so the little ones can go further uh, underneath the den and they'll be protected if anything um, tries to come and get them from from the main axis. So likely. Um, the hole that we're seeing as the entrance, there are a few more chambers inside that other bigger creatures cannot get to. So they're a bit safer here. Now if there were, for example, a very heavy uh, lion or leopard pressure in this particular area, likely they would just take their cubs and move somewhere else where they deem that it would be a bit safer for them. Has she gone behind us again? Alright. See if, see if it works. Oh, there we go. So, just pretty much behind us. Or directly behind us. <laughs> oh, attacking a piece of grass. Oh no, it's a twig. Very typical of these little ones is just biting <laughs> everything. Bobby, you're wondering what I would do if the cubs started chewing on the tires. Well, likely I would have to turn on the car just to try and, and start educating the hyena in terms of animal-human interactions. We don't want them to become too friendly with us. We want them to to know that they are sa safe around us, but we also have a comfort zone around them. Because it might not be a problem when they're small because it's still cute and they might not do anything, but if you imagine bigger hyenas and lots of them that come and do the same then it stops being funny. So likely just turning on the vehicle would just you know give it a bit of a of a fright in the sense that it would just then keep its distance a bit from us. But because it, it's pretty much keeping to its own and it's far away from us I don't think there's too much to worry about only if it started chewing the car to the point where I would get a bit worried of having a flat tire then maybe we would have to do so. Well, it's very important to maintain good relationships with them and just like we have to learn what their comfort zone is they have to also learn what our comfort zone is just so that we can all be around each other in the safest and most ethical and uh, how do you say it, like well for for all of us Shame I see her and I see all my little <laughs> brothers and cousins when they were little and everybody else just was up to something and they're like oh, come on somebody wants to play with me hello I'm awake <laughs> it's so fluffy Kristen, you're wondering how strong hyena cubs' jaws are. Well, considering hyenas have the strongest jaw bite of all the predators, or, or all the land predators, I should say, in the African bush, I reckon the bite of a little one is also very strong. Now, I don't have a specific number for you, but they can chew through so many things. Hello. Okay, it's just smelling everything around us and it's more curiosity than anything else. I think perhaps it hasn't seen vehicles for a little while so it's wondering what's happening and what is this. Definitely smelling the tires. Oh, you are the sweetest thing. Jenny, you're wondering if hyena cubs spend a lot of time by themselves. Well, they can. When the mothers or they go out hunting and they're still too small, they will not accompany them. So they can spend quite a long time on their own until 
the adults return to the den. I think it also heard whatever it is that was making a noise over there and it's gone off to investigate. Little Intima the Guardian or the Explorer. I think the Explorer might be better. Hm. What have you found there? Gary, you're wondering if these close encounters happen often. Um, I w if, you, if you mean regarding the little ones coming and inspecting the vehicles and being curious about them, yes, they happen every so often, but as, as, as they get older, then they kind of lose interest in vehicles and in us, so they pretty much will start ignoring us. But when we come to den sites, um, often the youngsters will be around us and because we limit the amount of vehicles around here it's also for for them to start feeling a bit more comfortable so they they come and explore and it's almost like a toy that doesn't really do anything very quickly they learn just to ignore it and carry on but they are definitely some of the most curious youngsters out there I see bunny you're wondering if the f fur would be soft or wiry well it's soft-ish when they're when they're young like the age that Intima is but as they start becoming older then it starts never becomes truly wiry but it becomes uh, rougher almost like you know if you've got a puppy or a kitten as they start getting older then their hair is not as nice as it, as it was when they were youngsters hmm. Right. Taylor is still busy tracking leopards, so let's go to her and see what she's up to. I was actually just having a quick listen to the radio. Funny thing that the radio, sometimes it gives you wonderful information, sometimes not. This time it has actually given me some interesting information. I was just listening to young Mike, he was chatting away, and it sounds like he's got some buffalo. And I think it actually could be the same buffalo that Gert and I were trying to put on camera for you yesterday afternoon But they were just too far in the bushes. It sounds like they're still around Philemon's cut lines I think that's where we will head to now Just got to find the right road to get on. We're on Gowrie Main um, But we spent quite a bit of time going up and down Gowrie Main between the Mulwati and the Cheetah cut line and then going into Chitwa towards the dam and back and forth because we're actually heading back to go into Juma and then I saw some fresh leopard tracks coming out of Juma. Sneaky, Tandy. She obviously did a loop and she crossed back out over our vehicle tracks and then went into little Gauri again. So we heard a squirrel alarming. We could see it sitting right on the top of a tree. But unfortunately, we didn't see anything. We just went up and down. But I did spot a bump into some landowners from Nsinga in Bif I think they're in Biffles, Biffles Hook. Anyways, and I'd said to them they were looking for a spot to have a sundowner. So I said, well, if you do stop in the area, keep a, an ear out because there's potentially a leopard around here. And there were lots of impala and kudu, so they were acting as our, well, I suppose our eyes to help us spot the predators too. They give their presence away. And I, I said to them, well, maybe, maybe this would be a good spot to sit because you could have a leopard ri walk right past you. So we've left left the leopard situation in their hands and hopefully she does pop out again and then they'll call us back around but I'd like to go and visit these buffalo because we have not seen buffalo for quite some time now besides the ones that we saw yesterday it's not a big herd I think there's any about we saw two dug boys I think Mike said there's about three of them we will go give it a bash but we're on uh, Shibamu road now in case you were wondering this is also a good road for leopards, but I haven't seen tracks along here for the last couple of days. They've moved on to other spots. But I think coming down to check the, the southern section will be a good spot to check probably tomorrow morning. 
and also actually we, you know I think we're gonna have to start our day tomorrow by driving unless we hear the lions around camp, camp tonight they're going all the way from Gauri gate and go straight up towards cheetah cut line and just check triple M and Gauri main for potential predator tracks and particularly leopards and lions I think that's gonna be a good place to start but let's hope that we hear the lions around camp and they come onto Duma and find one of those buffalo I haven't heard any updates unfortunately about the lions and uh, where they went to or if they made a kill or not I haven't heard anything more right not quite dark enough just yet to have the spotlight out but we'll just we'll just bring it out just in case maybe we spot an early chameleon maybe a honey badger this is also the road where I saw the honey badger the, uh, a few weeks ago and they like to move around in the same areas and it was about this time too maybe uh, yeah about this time we will have a look hi impala a couple of impala in the tamburti thicket behind us I you thought you were putting your blanket on again where is your blankie Sebastian oh I also left my blankie at camp I only can have a blankie in the morning yeah mornings are cold the evenings are not too bad you can get away with wearing shorts uh, it's getting chilly but it's yeah it's not it's not freezing we it was a bit bumpy yeah, I'm just going very slowly here though I don't want to miss anything though I know what's gonna happen I'll, I'm gonna call it right now is I'm gonna spot a daker because there's a daker that lives just here between Philemon's cut line and Shibama Road and I always hit the brakes way too hard to get excited because I think it's the honey badger let's see if we're gonna see the daker this evening nothing just yet maybe it's been eaten or just moved somewhere else that's also a case hello Kobe who is 15 years old you're wondering why do I have a radio in the car well let me show you this one it says rusty on it this one is for final control so I can talk away to Alice see I'm talking to Alice now and she's probably getting annoyed with me put that one down should we do the same thing on the game we won't do that on the game drive radio <laughs> and then Kobe this one is the game drive radio so it's actually very important um, to have a game drive radio because like I was explaining the other day we all work as a team when we're out on safari we're all searching for animals and we want our fellow um, guides to see these animals that we find now if I didn't have a radio even my loud booming voice wouldn't travel far enough to announce to the rest of the guides driving on the property that I'd found something and I'd probably also scare the animal that I'd had away so radio is the easiest way to communicate with each other so not only is it for Juma we've got different channels so up here in the north we have a northern channel um, that when you're driving on Juma and in Buffalo's Hook you'll use and then if you go onto Simbambili and Arethusa and Elephant Plains a little bit further that down that way you'll have a western channel and then we have an eastern channel as well so that's sort of uh, Little Gowrie, Chitwa, Cheetah Plains, Torchwood those those spots and then, then Torchwood also uses the northern channel a little bit too so it's important that you have got these sort of uh, different stations otherwise it would be so loud and confusing it would just be constant chatter on the radio and you hear me all the time I get annoyed with it and I always used to get in trouble as a guide because I'd just turn it off <laughs> I couldn't stand it and, I, and, and I'd just leave it and I'd just go and find my own animals and drive around in areas that nobody else was driving I was always the outcast I was always everywhere else but where the crowds were unless I was getting very desperate and my guests say hadn't seen a leopard or a lion then I would have to try and respond to those sightings otherwise I'd just prefer to find them all on my own but the buffalo is apparently coming up towards quarantine so I'm just going to keep checking around here and we'll see if we can find these buffalo but Ali is having a good old time at the hyena den I know she's been well she's been trying quite hard now did you find these hyenas so without further ado let's go take another look well it seems like Antima has finally given up uh, given <laughs> given up on moving around and trying to wake up the adults and she got a bit tired and now she's busy suckling 
Now, I've been going around something I said earlier on in my head, and I think I might have said it wrong, so let me just set the record straight just in case. Um, so the hyenas, they, they will suckle their cubs for quite a long time, perhaps. Sometimes I think it's just over a year that they will suckle them, and although sometimes they might bring little pieces of meat back to the dent, normally they do not, because they, they do not regurgitate their food like the wild dogs do, so they also will start taking their little ones to some of the nearby kills to, to feed on food. Uh, to feed on some of the food around here so they they don't bring like big pieces of meat all around every now and again you can come across perhaps a rib cage or just a leg of something that they've brought around but it's not like they will actively go and take a big piece and bring it to the den for the cubs to eat so just as i said it i think it came out wrong so i just didn't want to give the wrong information out <laughs> now they have very rich milk and that's perhaps one of the reasons why they can afford not to bring the food back here, just take them sporadically out of the den once they reach a certain age from about, I think it's five, six months old or so, when they start moving around with their parents to nearby kills and then feeding off that meat and then coming back onto the den. I think it's a very peaceful time now for little Intima with Ribbon. I was wondering which one of these two that we were looking at was Ribbon. Because hyenas, unlike some of the other animals, like for example um, lions, and in this way they are somewhat similar to elephants, they will not suckle um, any cubs that are not their own, and neither will elephants, they will just suckle their own offspring. Syed, you're wondering how many uh, how many cubs does a hyena produce in one single in one single litter? Uh, normally two. That's the most that they can have, and um, it gets a bit tricky because hyenas are very hierarchical society, and it's ruled by very complex social um, structures. Sorry, I was thinking for maybe the right word. So every single female will be higher ranked than a male, but the daughters of the matriarch, which I think in this case are Ribbon, if I'm not mistaken, all her daughters will be higher ranked than the daughters of all the other hyenas that form part of this clan. Now, if she were to have two female cubs, then it does happen that the oldest cub or the bigger cub will kill the younger cub just because it would see it as direct competition. If it's a male cub, sometimes they have maybe a bit of a better chance of surviving because automatically the female cub will have a higher status than the male cub. So it's quite tricky. There are exceptions, obviously, all throughout, but uh, the hyena social structure is very, very complicated. It's very, it's all about who who's better ranked and about food research and very competitive more so than some of the other um, social animals that we get in this area. Now look at that, that is some great camouflage, just this very long grass is hiding or blending them perfectly well and as it starts getting darker it'll be harder to see them. But we have got the IR here that we are going to turn on so the hyenas do not see this light. It's only for our camera benefit. And we can see it a little bit better now. I think I have lost them. I can't even see them now. <laughs> I think we're looking in the wrong direction there. I think it's a bit more to the right. <laughs> How is that? We thought the IR was going to help us and now we've actually lost the hyenas. <laughs> And they are straight. Yeah, no, they are there. Straight in front of us. There we go. <laughs> Who knew that even with the IR it was going to be complicated to see them. Now the other adult potentially is has got the other cub but has not woken up and the other one is too little and will not come out yet until given a signal by the parent. Perhaps it's still quite small. I haven't seen it yet but Taylor did mention that it was still wobbly on its feet so I'm thinking a very tiny cub is in there <laughs> just the ears flicking very peacefully sleeping I 
All right. It seems like Taylor is becoming Indiana Taylor, and she's got not the IR but a flashlight, perhaps a spotlight. So let's go over to her and see where where she's headed and what she's looking for. We're smelling at the moment. Sebastian and I keep smelling a delicious fragrance coming from the bushes, but we can't work out what it is. We keep searching. It smells like something with white flowers. It's got that very sort of jasmine tinge to it. Yeah. See, there it is again. Yeah. Now you can't all nice. smell it. It's delicious. I wonder I wonder if the um, maybe the num nums have started getting their flowers because they smell quite nice. Oh, it's delicious. Hmm, I don't know what it is. Anyway, we'll have to come walk around here and find it because it seems as though just looking into the bushes is not working. Now, I've been working on a new number one single for July 2017 and a, I think it's a chameleon song version 3 now. <laughs> I was singing it to Sebastian, I was making it up as we were driving along. Alice and Megan, are you ready? I'm talking to the directors now. Oh, oh no, that doesn't sound too convincing. Alice, you're supposed to pipe me up and say, yeah, Taylor, you go, girl. And she's gone, she's gone, oh boy. <laughs> like it's going to be another disaster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me try this one. <clears throat> Version three, chameleon song, take one. Come and come and come and come and come and chameleon. Where have you been? It has been way too cold. Are you hiding at the base of the trees? Under all the leaves? Where have you been? Now I know this is not the words of the song or the tune because I'm gonna make it my own. I don't know why I'm rapping. This doesn't make any sense, so I'm probably just gonna stop singing now and that's the end. <laughs> there we go. Ah, yes, I think I've had way too much sugar today. <laughs> and then this is a comment from Megan who's D2 today, she's in final control, she says what a rock star, thank you Megan, I shall give you my autograph later, uh, I'll, actually I'll give you, a, um, you'll get the first CD and I'll sign the cover for you, it will be me with a chameleon, I don't know what the, what the cover of that is going to be, now I'm still looking for these buffalo and a chameleon, we've seen as I'm singing the songs but I'm not having much luck out here just yet, and we'll keep looking, keep scanning. Mike said that they were slowly making their way up towards quarantine. I think I'm actually going to have to go the other way. I'm, I'm making wrong turns here. We will go around. Oh, just watch out for that big stump. And this is also a good area. We've seen lots of bush babies around here. I'm looking for bush babies too. Maybe a white-tailed mongoose. That would be quite special. And I'm sure that you would all enjoy an owl sighting of some sorts, whether it's a rose eagle owl, perhaps a spotted eagle owl, pearl spotted owlet, barred owlet. Oh, and Kobe and Mercedes were wondering, or not wondering, you would love to see bush babies. Well, we'll do a search. I thought I'd picked up a branch. I haven't. It's just the grass touching my tires. No, that's elephant dung. We also didn't find our elephant. F the yes. Buffalo, I think. Oh, that's so disappointing. I thought that that was a buffalo. Oh man, it's not though. Let me show you what I saw. We'll go down here. Maybe it is still a buffalo. Looks like horns and then a dark sort of patch. And I think it's just a tree, maybe it's burnt. Let me show you what I saw, but from the distance. Now bear in mind, I was looking behind leaves, so it is quite easy to mistake in it, but it was just the perfect height as well. So you see this first little branch here that I've got the light directly on, from a distance and, and amongst all the silver cluster leaves, that actually looked like the shape of the horns. But it uh, is a buffalo, Taylor. Is it a buffalo? It oh my gosh, what kind of buffalo, Sebastian? Uh, uh, Juma <laughs> we'll just pretend. It's um, it's still trying to recover from the drought. This one, it's very thin. <laughs> right? No, it's not a buffalo. Uh, that's, his eye. that's his eye, says Sebastian. It's just what a cyclops buffalo. Okay, 
now it looks more like a rhino to me. <laughs> if you're creative. Actually, funny, funny enough, I've had guests and one of their goals was to go around and try and find animals within the, the, the trees. So you know how you get these amazing knots on, on the different trunks of the trees and some of them create pictures. Or any shape of wood and this is because of earth lodge at sabi sabi they've decorated um basically the entire lodge with all driftwood that washed down in a flood in thousand two thousand and long ago two thousand and two it was the big ones even further away <laughs> and um and basically some of these things one looked like a rhino one looked like a crocodile the other one looked like a giraffe drinking so they obviously got that idea and we did we found some amazing things maybe we must try and do that one day is actually start when it's a bit quiet and the animals aren't um sort of around we can play a game and we can see how many objects we can find that look like animals and we'll just pretend that they're the real thing right let me sorry let me just turn around here let's go back yeah. we'll go back down Philemon's cut line I'm determined to find these buffalo and as all of you know it's my favorite comedian spot too I'm often quite lucky around here we will search oh no just lots of impala let me turn those lights off so I don't blind them well not blind them but just disorientate them Impala, have you seen where those buffalo went? No? I'm just gonna pass the Impala, you'll just see them over here. Hi guys, good evening. Are you heading up to quarantine? Be safe. Look out for the leopards and the hyenas. They seem to be enjoying Impala at the moment. Oh my goodness, it's a long line of Impala. They're still going. Daniel, who is 14, you said, what is the, the best thing that I've seen besides baby elephants? Is that correct, Alice? The best thing that I've seen? Oh, his best thing. What is mine? Okay, so Daniel's is, here, the buffalo are here now. There's dung on the road. I don't know where they've gone. They're sneaky. But there's, there's the dung. Look, Sebastian. Let's show them everyone buffalo dung because we haven't seen any signs of them for such a long time. I must have, must have just missed it. That's very fresh. And their tracks are very fresh too over the top of mine. So I keep missing them. Daniel, hmm. Well, buffalo dung's not my favorite thing. I can tell you that right now. There's even a few flies on there. <laughs> no. Sebastian, that's terrible. <laughs> he's just, he's put me off chocolate mousse for the rest of my life now. Because that's what Sebastian says that that buffalo dung looks like. No. <laughs> Oh goodness, right. Let's carry on. Oh, they're gone in here. So their tracks cross here. Let's just check. Might have to go down the road. Daniel, I'm thinking what is the best thing that I've seen? I also like baby elephants. Um, I like, no, you know what? That hyena sighting we had today of that young fluffy cub that you're sitting watching with Ali was running around in circles like a race car, like it, well, it thought it was a race car. And, um, and then it was jumping up against one of the adults and pushing off and bouncing back. So that was quite cool. I enjoyed that. So I'm going to say the baby hyenas are my best. Now, where are these buffalo? I'm still looking for the buffalo and I'm going to keep searching. Hopefully we're going to find them. Maybe they pop out of the thicket. Ali is playing the patience game with the hyenas. Infrared is on. Will they come out? I'm not sure. You'll have to just join her and wait and see. Well, they haven't come out and Antima is still busy suckling, which is hyena cubs can do for extended periods of time. So I think maybe this is her way pretty much calling it a night. She hasn't moved one inch and I had to hope that whoever it is that's at the back that we haven't been able to see in terms of the adults might move around, perhaps the cub of the little one, and just call it out. But um, no such luck for now. It seems like Intima overexhausted herself running around that den and coming and inspecting us. So I think she's had a big day out in the real hyena world and she's becoming very quickly an older hyena so very sweet of her to have come and had seen us and allowed me to finally get to to see her once more 
um, after the whole day because I even if she was like a little shark circling around the car I've been a bigger shark circling around the den <laughs> just hoping to get a glimpse of them but it was all completely worth it for this amazing experience that we had a few seconds ago now I'm gonna stick around here for a few minutes see if perhaps anything else changes but if not then I think I'm just gonna leave them to their nighttime activities seems like Intima's too happy having some food finally who knows if maybe she was actually just circling around just trying to make time making sure that mom wouldn't push her away once she tried suckling <laughs> very tough spot in between the bushes there but you can see why it's such a good den for them as well it's very it's very hidden, very secluded, easy for the youngsters to be around and have different hideouts and even for the adults. All they have to do is lay down and they'll be pretty invisible. MTR, you're wondering how long does a hyena sleep in the day? I'm not entirely sure. I imagine there are, there have been some studies done about it, but they are mostly active during the night. So I think they would sleep the vast majority of the day, perhaps anything to, from eight to ten hours during the day, and then a few hours into the night as well. Um, but definitely not as much as lions. Hyenas are always seen moving around and sometimes they have to walk quite far to be able to find food that they can either kill or scavenge um, from. So these hyenas, I know the adults have been here roughly since... What time did Taylor come around here? 8.39 in the morning and there are two adults that are here so I reckon they've been sleeping for the better part of the day. As who knows when they started moving but like I said we definitely saw them moving around around about what time was it this morning when we saw them around about Just seven six. after six now oh, my bearings of times are completely wrong so yeah so they must have been moving from let's say early hours of the morning until around about 7 38 ish before that before we saw them perhaps around about 7 30 and they've been sleeping since sure they had quite an interesting night hunting and then finishing off that kill and coming back to the youngsters but even when they arrived and we were here when the when the adults arrived this morning they carried on going and there's a dam not too far from here so I think they went down there for a drink and then came all the way back up here afterwards Oh my goodness. Taylor, I think we're going to need to find you a new artistic or singer name. I'm going to leave this hyenas. Um, I think they have pretty much settled for the day. But let's go over to Taylor, who's apparently become a rap artist. Now I feel the pressure, Ali. We'll have to do a... a a combined rap one of these days. I've actually never heard Ali sing, but I feel as though she's a sneaky shower singer. And what do you think, Sebastian? Have you heard her from Ingus? Yeah, every day she works, she every day she sings a song when she showers? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, well, I feel as though I've been issued a challenge. My goodness, Wildebeest, why are you running so fast? What's happened? I think it's the little ones playing. Actually, you can just see, it's quite difficult. You might, might be able to see a dust cloud. From the wildebeest we might see their silhouette yes it is it's the youngsters all playing about you can see them they're not really going to put the spotlight on them yes they're bouncing they're so excited so just sort of as we saw with the um with the zebra earlier on today racing about the wildebeest have now decided to play but what i was going to say to all of you i'm going to keep i'm going to keep driving because i feel as though i get more inspiration when i drive um, it, the challenge has come from our beard. Now I don't know if he's realized what he's done. But you said that FC's panicking and saying quickly switch to Ali before Taylor starts singing a song about dung. Guess what? <laughs> I don't know how it's going to work out but I tried to make one up very very quickly and it goes a little something like this. Now I've forgotten it. Now I'm going to get stage fright. 
I have to just sing the tune on my head. <laughs> okay. How did it go, Sebastian? Dung over here, dung over there, dung hung everywhere. Up in the trees, on the ground, maybe even in my hair. Ho! Oh, dung over here, dung over there. <laughs> I have to stop singing now. There's somebody having sundowners. So I just better be quiet and act civilized and like, pretend like I'm a professional field guard. You know, it's not blind them. What? Oh, what? Oh, I blinded them with a spotlight. We'll just sneak past. They probably already heard me singing my dung song and are cringing with embarrassment now. Luckily, I don't get embarrassed. Okay, just go past them. We act normal. Nothing to see here. Okay, now we can go lights on again. Off we go. Okay, so this is also another good area. I'm not going to finish the dung song because I don't actually have anything more to go with it. Sebastian, you don't have any songs? You've got a daughter. You should be filled with all sorts of wonderful tunes. You're a very bad singer. Do you think I sing well? Definitely not. No. Okay, well, you are the first one that's ever said that. <laughs> I'll <laughs> you said that uh, you take it back you take it back okay Fair enough. well I, I hopefully it was a good enough dung song I don't know how many songs about animal feces you've ever heard before but there we go might be your first one but yes but thank you Sebastian no one has ever told me that I sing well because I know I don't okay so so uh, Sebastian's daughter's name is Casey and he says that Casey will love it. So next time Casey comes to visit, which will be next weekend, hey, yes. I will sing. Sing Casey all the songs. I'll practice on her and then she can give me her verdict and tell me which ones are suitable for game drive. We'll do that. But they, they're so spontaneous though. I never remember the lyrics. So I try and practice, like I'll try and make one up. Alice will say, we want you to do this. And then I'll go, okay, I'll try. And then the one that I've made up is always completely different to the one that I actually sing to you. And normally the first version is so much better. So perhaps I should just start making them up on the go instead of practicing. Oh, that was just a termite mount. <laughs> that gave me a bit of a fright. Lots of impala. I'm just looking for chameleons now actually. But I don't seem to be uh, winning just yet. We'll go back past the wild wildebeest. What else? Oh, hello, scrub hair. Little scrub hairs running around. There's so many of them at the moment. Some in Yana. They're just feeding on some wild medlar. Impala's having a scratch. Whose eyes are those? And probably more impala in that thicket. Let's check up here. I can't believe we haven't seen a chameleon because it really isn't cold this evening. I mean, shorts, I've got this little poofy jacket on. That doesn't really keep you too warm. I think I'm driving in my own dust, which is not great. Mm. One day, quarantine is going to be filled with all sorts of delightful nocturnal creatures. Just not this evening, unfortunately. Ooh. Apparently I might spot an alley. She says, she says she's coming over to hear me sing. We'll see if we can spot her first. Hello wildebeest. They're behaving now. They've stopped running around and creating a dust cloud. Maybe it was the wildebeest dust cloud that I just drove through. Still can't find the buffalo. And um, we might see them actually at the dam. Keep an eye out on the dam cam this evening if you are going to be scrolling through it. Maybe three Duggar boys will make their way there. They seem to be heading straight in that direction. But they're still traveling through the block. I wasn't managed to pull pull them out of my sleeve this evening, but we'll try again in the morning. Who else are we going to find? Should we give one last bash for bush babies? Check up in these marulas. Lots of impala. No. I think I'm um, we're out of luck. Okay, this is another go-to spot. This is the area where we had the chameleon versus the katydid. But it did not catch the katydid. Katydid flew away. No chameleons. Right. Okay. I'm not having any luck and I'm giving Ali the slip. She's not allowed to find me. So I'm not telling her where I'm driving. But let's go back across to her and see where she thinks we are. 
Well, Sneaky Taylor, I know exactly where you are because I could see all her vehicle lights. The funny thing about these cars that we drive in is that they light up like a Christmas tree, just like Jamie used to say. So I can definitely see Taylor's light. Now, what Taylor doesn't know is that we are parked right exactly at the entrance of camp. You see, there's a Juma sign there. <laughs> so she's bound to come around this way sooner than later and when she is here we'll pounce on her and maybe give her a bit of a fright. So we will patiently wait for Taylor here just like Mbulo waited for her. <laughs> See if perhaps we can give her a fright. Alice don't tell her we're here because we're gonna really try but I can't see her lights anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Hiding from Taylor. We're ambushing Taylor. Right, I will let you know how this one plays out, but it's been wonderful to have you all on board today. We'll see you tomorrow morning for another wonderful afternoon here in the bush.